Hello and welcome to a new tips and tricks video. This time I want to design a mini game and take you guys along with me, showing you the process of figuring out how the stuff works and since this video came out we probably got a new mini game. So let's start. Okay, I already have an idea for a mini game, but before we actually go into that I need to figure out some stuff. The first one is the behavior of the new skulk sensors. Great! It seems like we can get an output from below the sensor. That's already really good. Now let's put some wool around it so we only get an output from above. Next up, let's check if we can get a signal when we put obsidian on top of the sensor. Let me add a line of redstone real quick so I can actually see if we get a signal when I walk on the obsidian. And maybe even add a redstone lamp that makes it pretty clear when we have an output. Fantastic! This works already. This was a very crucial part of my idea. Okay, now we have to see at what point the sensor actually notices that we walk around here. For that I'm going to expand our obsidian platform a little. Alright, here we got an output. Let's mark this block with some crying obsidian and test again. Huh, was that here already? That would be pretty early. Yes, it seems like it. Hmm, this is too much for what I want. Let's see if we can do something about that. The only thing that came to my mind so far is making the wool tunnel bigger. So I've added a layer. Let's check if this changes anything. Yeah, seems like it. Okay, where does it activate now? Okay, now it's down from 5x5 five five to 3x3, three three, which is perfect. What about adding another wool layer? In theory, this should reduce it down to 1x1, one one, right? Let's check if this is true. Ooh, I'm a sneaky boy. Alright, let's see if we are right about the 1x1. One one. Yes, it seems so. Nice! With that we have the ability to reduce the area where the player gets detected. This will be very useful. Just to be safe, ancient debris is movable with pistons, if I remember correctly. Yes, that is indeed the case. Good. And it also should be blast resistance to TNT. Cause this minigame will be all about TNT. Let's also test this beforehand. Whoops, first the TNT, then the fire. Very nice. So, with the debris being movable and blast resistant, we can add blocks that change their position for like an entrance or an exit. Okay, and even though the sensor obviously detects the explosion, nothing below the obsidian gets damaged. I've added some sensors to the side that should activate now all the time when I walk around, which is indeed the case. Nice. With that, our testing of the mechanics should be already successfully done. Nice. So, can you already see where this is going? Yes, this is going to many, many TNT dupers. So the idea is that you walk through an obsidian room and you have to get to the other side without walking above the hidden skulk sensors below. Somewhat like Minesweeper, but you walk through the minefield. I've used crying obsidian again to mark the sensor, which obviously wouldn't be the case for the finished game. And I already lost, cause I've walked over the sensor. Now let's add some more, shall we? I went ahead and added two more sensors, both with just two layers of wool, so we should get 3x3 three three areas. This is very handy, so we don't need as many sensors. And again, the spots where it should trigger are marked for this video. Oh, okay, that's a problem I hadn't thought of. The dropping and exploding TNT triggers new TNT to drop. Huh. Why did it stop just now? I would expect an endless loop. Did something break? Hmm... This part looks okay to me. Ah, there's a torch missing. A little more obsidian should fix that issue. 
There we go. Okay, with the torch breaking fixed, we can see that we really have a loop issue. Let me think a bit about this one. I fiddled around a little bit and now we slowed down the TNT trigger with an Etho hopper clock. I've put in 16 items which should give us enough time to not trigger in an endless loop. Let's test it again. TNT triggers. It explodes. And now the clock resets. Nice, that works. We could take out some items to make the timing perfect, but I don't think this is needed cause once triggered the game should be over for that round. Well, okay, this is a lot of progress, but I had many failures on the way and now it finally works the way I want it to. So, the idea is that we don't want the player to just sneak through the game. For that we have sensors here on the side which trigger the TNT if they don't get a signal for a while. When no player is in the game, the node block here will give a constant signal, but once a player enters, the node block gets deactivated. The player will always have some time to think about his next move, for that I've added this fade out clock up here, but once it runs out, the TNT gets activated. And we also reset the game by reactivating the notebook. Let's check it out. Oh, I also added an entrance lock once you're in, which isn't working. Lol. Okay, the entrance lock has been fixed. Now we should be able to walk around in the game as we want until we don't walk over a sensor. But if we stop walking for too long or sneak for a while, the TNT gets triggered. Alright, with all that working as intended, I felt comfortable enough to add a second layer to the game. The redstone stayed all the same, it is just more of it. So more sensors below and more sensors on the sides. I've added an exit which only opens when the TNT did not get activated. But I was also pretty lazy and just made the redstone lines longer. It would be better to have a separate circuit for the upper level so it would react a little bit faster. But at the end of the day this is again just a showcase of the idea and the redstone isn't done very well, just functional. So this is how it would look like if you make it through the game, just walking to the end since we know where the sensors are. The exit opens up and we are free to leave. Leaving the game through the exit also obviously resets the game for the next player. And this is how the game would look like if you don't know where the sensors are. Just to show you this, the exit won't open when the TNT has been activated. That way you can't just sprint through the game. Here I'm just trying to find a spot where you wouldn't die once the TNT is activated, but spoiler, I couldn't find one. Okay, with that I think the game could be fun to play. Thank you for staying with me over the course of this video, I hope you enjoyed it. I still don't have any idea how to name this bad boy, so feel free to suggest something in the comments down below. So let's wrap things up now, as always leave a like if you did and maybe consider subscribing, it really means a lot to me. Check out my twitter if you want to know what I'm up to next and until next time, bye bye.